What is up guys? My name is Ed and I'm a freelance Shopify developer. In today's tutorial, I want to take you through quite a fast paced, no research, just common sense approach to doing some basic SEO for your store. I'll show you all those little SEO tasks that you need to do when you're setting up a new Shopify store or even on an established store, you might have skipped these things. And if you want to rank better on Google, it's better to get them done. I feel like the topic of SEO is so often overcomplicated. They tell you to do a bunch of research using Google Keyword Planner or even expensive paid tools before actually starting anything on your store. And I think that's not really necessary. Something is better than nothing. And the 80-20 rule really applies to SEO. That's where 20% of your effort, the basics, gives you 80% of the results. That's the philosophy behind this video. So if you like that, let's get started. Now we're going to focus a bit on product pages. I mean, I'm going to be demonstrating on a product page, but the concept is the same for collections that also applies to blog content and regular static pages as well. So let's start with SEO friendly titles. You guys know the Fuel Raven Kenken backpack, right? Very popular the past couple of years. I think it's a great example. So let's say that I named my product Fuel Raven Kenken, and that's it. The problem is that this is kind of gibberish. Like you might know the name of this product, but generally names of a brand or model is only good when people are searching for that exact name and model. But what if you want to also help people who are searching for Fuel Raven backpack or something like that? Well, that's why you might need a little bit more in here. So generally, I follow this strategy. Firstly, the brand, the model, right? So that's the name. Then we go with what the product actually is, which is a small backpack. And then we go with any identifying features of that backpack. So 16 liters and maybe the color, right? So the size and color is a common one. And this would be an SEO friendly title, but it's actually a little bit ugly, isn't it? Like you might not want all of this title appearing here and appearing on your collection pages, right? Because it'll be going onto two lines. So, you know, you don't have to do the best, most optimal thing. So just make it shorter if you want. You can just make it like this, your Van Kenken backpack royal blue whatever makes sense and, and strikes that balance but those are my tips keep it short and readable say what the name is what the product actually is or in other words the product type and then any identifying features of that product moving on to descriptions you got to have one the problem with e-commerce seo in general is that compared to like regular informational websites there isn't much content on e-commerce stores. You might see a product listing like this and it'll just have the price, the product title, maybe the vendor, and that's it. There just aren't enough words on the page for Google to know what this is even about. Google recommends 300 words of content per page in general for websites. I think that a minimum of 100 words for a description is acceptable. If you have a small inventory, like 10 to 20 products, then I recommend putting a lot of effort into writing a longer description and enticing one with lots of information about the product. Because you can afford to do that when you don't have that many products, right? If you have hundreds or thousands of products, then of course, you can't really invest a lot of time into writing a custom description for each one. But I think that you at least have some bullet points like specs that you can add about the product. And also you don't have to be good at writing. So for example, I have this list of specs here. I'm going to add this as like a minimal description. Nowadays, we also have Shopify magic, the AI writing tool. And I'm going to paste these bullet points in here and it's going to write out a little blurb like that. So I can keep that and I can have both there. This one just for extra content, this one for readability, you know, and then we have approximately 200 words product description. And I think that this is much better than having nothing. Obviously, this is a bit duplicated and you could put a bit more effort into rewrite, rewriting this uh, more like about the benefits rather than just the features. All right, let's pick up the base a bit and move on to the so-called SEO part, um, which people tend to focus on a lot more than their title and description. But remember that the actual on-page content is more important than whatever SEO metadata you add here. So I kind of skipped over this, but 
the meta title and description is what people see in the search results page. You recognize this, right? It looks familiar. It's exactly, you know, this stuff, what you see in the search results page. So let's go back to this Fuel Raven product. And if you remember, um, I, I wrote a more SEO friendly title earlier, and then I, I removed some of those things just to keep it nice and neat for our actual store. Well, here in the meta title is where you can add those things back in and make it more um, SEO friendly, right? So here is where we go small backpack, uh, 16 liters, royal blue. And another thing you can do is at the end, put your, um, your website name, right? Sometimes people use a pipe like this. So to summarize, we have the uh, product name, we have the product type or what it is, we have any identifying features of it, and then we have our own brand, okay, our own website. Last thing to keep in mind is that Google usually cuts off any text that is longer than 65 to 70 characters, hence this limitation here. Moving on to the meta description, I think that there's a misconception here that you should put lots of keywords in this area but actually it doesn't matter as much as your product description here. And it doesn't even matter as much as the meta title here. So keywords can go in here. Yes, that will help your product be found. But here you should actually write for human beings because Google has confirmed that the meta description is no longer a ranking factor. So the point of this area here is to actually entice people to click and to go on your page. Okay, why should they buy from you? Because this store, when you buy from ukgymshark.com, offers next day delivery and free returns. Shop online today, a little call to action, okay? By the way, if you wanna learn how to do this sort of thing, then make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon because I'll be covering those sorts of more advanced SEO topics in a later video. Getting back to the meta description, you have a max of 320 characters here, but realistically, Google only shows about 150 characters. Let's check the word count of this and it'll be only 118, that's only 20 words, okay? So just a bit of text encouraging people to click and to shop on your store. You can also automate this, so you can do it in bulk across multiple products with an app called Tiny Image. I'll demonstrate this more towards the end of the video, but uh, this meta description is definitely something that is sometimes useful to automate. I'm pretty sure that that's actually what Gymshark is doing here. So you can see that the first sentence of this meta description is for this particular product, but then you can see that this sentence is actually bulk applied to multiple products. By the way, if you wanna try out this app, make sure you use my link because you'll get a 20% discount, but more on this later. Moving on to the product URL, it's quite simple. Google recommends URLs that are as short as possible, readable, and perhaps even easy to remember. Let me show you an example of an ugly URL so you know what not to do. Your even Kenken 16 liter small backpack in royal blue, right? So usually because your uh, product URL is generated by default from the title. If you have like a decent normal title, then your URL should be fine as well. But in case you have words like and that in uh, in the title, then I recommend actually removing them. So we would remove that, probably remove this, right? Just so that it's it's nicer, it's more beautiful. It's a shorter, more concise URL like that. One thing that you need to remember is that if you've already shared this product URL somewhere, if you've linked to it from blog posts, for example, then if you change it, let's say you wanna remove the color. If you change it, make sure you also, that this is checked. It will create a URL redirect from the old URL to the new one. Because then anyone who clicks on the old link will be redirected to the new page. If you leave this off, then anyone clicking on the old link will land on a 404 page. Now let's take a look at this gymnastics rings product. I think this is a good example for the product category. This is also important for SEO, not in such a direct way as actual page content or as the search engine listing area, the metadata, 
but this product category actually feeds into various other sales channels. Like especially if you're using something like Google Merchant Center, it needs to match Google's product category taxonomy, right? So this is like a standardized listing of categories and not just Google uses this. I think they're quite standardized across various other uh, sales channels, marketplaces, Facebook, and things like that as well. So here you can simply search for your product most of the time. See, it even has gymnastics rings, even though this is quite a niche product. Um, and you'll see that gymnastics rings, if we click here, it is part of the gymnastics category, which is part of the athletics category, various sports here, sporting goods, and then finally, back to all. One final tip I have is actually open up the Google product category taxonomy and try to find the correct parent category if you're selling something generic like pants, because you'll notice that they go into multiple categories. So if you're selling something like motorcycle protective clothing, motorcycle pants, then you don't want to select the generic clothing pants, right? Because this one is going to be much more accurate. It's going to be much more helpful. And we're almost finished with products. The final thing is optimizing your images. There are two parts to this. The first is alt text. This is text that is used by Google to understand what is actually on the image because you can't see the image, right? Alt text can help your image be found in Google images. And it's also used by screen readers. So people with uh, visual disabilities, blindness, you know, uh, can still use your website. So that's important for that reason as well. Here you basically just want to, you know, describe your product. Um, it doesn't have to be like proper grammar. It's just a bunch of keywords that describe what is going on here. The second part is also the file name. Um, Google actually does look at what the file name is. So it's not very good to get images from your digital camera that might be called DSC one, two, three, four, five, six dot JPEG. Yeah. Um, it's not very good to leave them that way or to do what I did here. You do want the image file name to make sense and to contain some keywords as well, but you don't change that here. You actually change that, um, through content files. So I can change that file name here, but I actually recommend using tiny image. Once again, it can bulk. Uh, rename your images. So besides just compressing them, it does renaming of the files as well. I'll go through that a little bit later. All right, so far, we've just been talking about the product page. But as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the same concepts apply for most of the page types in Shopify, collections, blog posts, etc. Let me show you just a few details about a collection. So calisthenics equipment, right? You do need a collection description. This is so often neglected on Shopify stores. I think because you just want to show people your products, right? You just want them looking at the product grid, but you should put a description in and try to move it maybe to the bottom of the page. That's a common strategy. So fill out the title, the description, and then for the SEO part here, you can improve this title a bit. What I recommend doing is listing some of the types of products that can be found. So rings, weight vests, push up bars, like so. And then again, you can go with your brand name at the end. And this will help a little bit with being discovered. And here again, just an enticing description, so that people click. Finally, you can find the SEO settings for the home page by going to online store, and then preferences. Here you can fill out the meta title and the meta description for the home page. Obviously, you don't have the title and description fields because that will be coming from what's actually on your page. If you really want to do it right, you want to also do image optimization for images that you uploaded through the theme customizer. So for example, this image banner, you upload it here, click the edit button and you can change the URL handle. I mean, the image file name that is and you can add alt text here. You can also do the exact same thing through content and files. You'll actually find that same image somewhere. And it's actually best to rename and add alt text for pretty much all the files used in your store. Another thing you should do for your store in general uh, is go to settings and then go to brand. 
And if you haven't uploaded, you know, your logo, your colors and things like that here, then you definitely should because this is also used in data feeds to sales channels. And I think it's important for SEO as well. You can add your social links here. And if that's included in structured data schema for Google's rich snippets, for Google Merchant Center, for Facebook, anything like that. So just fill this out because it's quick and easy and it's used in many different places. If everything I covered so far sounds like a lot of work for you, then I recommend using an SEO app for Shopify, the one I mentioned throughout this video, Tiny Image, because it can help guide you and it can put some of those things on autopilot so you don't have to think about them. The reason I like this app is it is one of the most highly reviewed apps. It's in like the top two or three apps on the App Store for SEO, but it's also a built for Shopify app, which the other apps are not. Built for Shopify means that it meets the highest performance standards set by Shopify. It's a special badge that Shopify introduced to its app store just this year. And also Tiny Image is actually quite affordable compared to some other SEO apps. And you'll get 20% off if you use my link from the description of this video. So the features I want to show you is the templating of alt text, file names and SEO metadata. What do I mean by templating? Basically, you can generate an automated SEO title or description based on this uh, data that it can get from your product. So this is pretty self-explanatory. Buy product name for only the price of the product at you know the name of your shop. So you can change this to whatever format you want. But as I mentioned before, Gymshark is doing a similar thing where they had uh, the product name at the start and then they had a phrase at the end that just went on every product. So you can just add whatever phrase you want here. And then once you click activate, it will automatically start doing that for every product that you upload to your store every time you create a new product and also for existing products. And you can set up these templates for both the title and the description for products, for collections as well. And you can do the same thing for alt text for images, which I think is one of the most useful features. And it can rename your image files as well. So you can upload those DSC 12345 JPEG images straight from your camera and it will actually rename them to something that makes sense. And then I'll cover these features in later videos, but it will actually optimize those images. Also, it'll compress them so they take up less space. They don't take as long to load. Your website is faster. And by the way, this image and speed optimization stuff is actually the main features of this app. Um, the templating that I showed you is just a small bonus. And that's all guys. The next few videos will probably be on the topic of SEO. So if you have any SEO questions, then leave them in the comments and I'll see you there. Bye.